Good people, what's up, what's good? I know you guys are probably enjoying the show, but before we get started, let me tell you guys about Cushion Heights. It is a dope clothing brand that merges black history with clothing. They are amazing, good people. Check them out and follow them at Cush underscore N, I-N-N underscore Heights. Like Heights, you already know how to spell that. Hopefully, Cush N Heights will have that spelled for you right here at the bottom. Check them out, follow them on social media, get you some dope merch, rock it. And what they especially talk about, which is really, really cool, is that the meaning of Kush. Kush was a dope civilization. Way before we started talking about cannabis and weed, Kush was an actual place before Egypt as well. So, again, man, they talk about history. They merged that black culture with dope merchandise, high quality. Follow the good people at Kush and Height. Show them love and support on social media. Purchase, shop with them, and you will not be disappointed. Again, at Kush underscore N underscore Heights. Show them some love. Peace. Let's get back to the show. You know, that's, you know, what, what I, what I feel is so important is this, this has to be developed in a sequential way. Mm -hmm. Okay. A lot of visuals as we go through these, th through this series, every third Friday of the month in, in the webinar, I'm approaching it from many different perspectives so that we can help understand what the story is. And to lay out an evidence-based concept that would allow the learner, the ones that are listening, that it makes sense. You need geography. You need to know where we're talking about. So I want to take you to the Aturi Forest. I want to take you to Southern Africa. I want to show you what the humans were doing at that part of the world. Then I want to take you to um, various areas where they began to move across the globe. I want to make sense of that with you. I, I don't want you to believe me. I just want to make you think, Brother Caleb. Yes, sir. Just think. Mm. You, know, we, you know, black folk been bamboozled, hustled. Mm. Every game that could be played has been attempted on us. And I know that once brothers and sisters get a hold of truth, mm. truth, no truth, they'll never shake it loose. Mm. Wow. There's nobody in America that understands this better than African Americans. <laughs> We've been through it, man. Yes, sir. Every game, every hustle, mm. everything that someone could do on the plantations of the South and the North has been played on us, has been attempted on us. Mm. And for whatever reason, what didn't make us, uh, what didn't kill us made us strong. That's right. And I saw even in some of your, 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 your other podcasts, you say, we are a great people. Mm. But the thing is, brother, we have to understand that. Mm. We, we, we have to understand what we mean when we say that. What makes you great? You know, and, and I know a lot of people, you know, are, um, and I do it myself. We go to Kush Kemet. Yeah. We go to the ancient civilizations. Yeah. And we hold them up as classical African civilizations. But I would dare say that our ancestors on the plantation mm. were a classical African civilization. Be they enslaved or not. They lived a royal life to take themselves from the pit of pain yes, sir. to the doorway of the promised land. Hmm. And what they were able to do for us hmm. just by living another day. Yes, sir. They ain't commit suicide. Hmm. And when you look, if you thought that your life was going to be like that, yeah. Yeah. suicide becomes an option. Mm-hmm. Why I want to live like this? That's right. I don't That's see right. no hope. Mm. I don't see hope. Mm. This is how it's going to be every day. But what our ancestors say, it ain't going to be like this every day. Mm. And I'm going to do what's necessary. I'm going to keep on keeping on. It ain't over till we win. Mm. And they put everything on the line for them to be able to survive. I don't have to go back to ancient Africa for a classical African civilization. I can go back to the plantation. It's not a matter of them being enslaved. How many stories do we hear about the greatest royalty really is the one that's enslaved? How about Cinderella? 
Wow. Okay. <laughs> all all the stories that have been created where that which is royal has been put in a lesser position so that those who would wish to abuse can rule while the ones that really deserve to sit on the throne is the one that's cleaning the throne. Mm. That's our story. Wow. Our story is that the the, uh, the first shall come last and the last shall come first. That's right. The characteristic of ma'at, reciprocity. You shall reap what you sow. And we put everything on the line, believing in a spiritual system that would emancipate us. Let me tell you a story about George Washington Carver. Please. George Washington Carver, where he grew up, because I've been doing research on this, brother. Uh, I'm going to do a webinar on this, brother, because <laughs> I have Washington. more to say. But, oh, man, listen, I, I got some information on George Washington Carver that's going to blow folk mind. George Washington Carver grew up and was not allowed to be part of the society, so he could not go to church. But he said that he had a, a young friend of European descent that talked to him about Christianity. And he taught him songs that they sang in church. And George Washington Carver liked those songs. As he developed his life, he began to get a very strong relationship to Christianity. He could never be a practicing Christian because as black, he couldn't go to church. And they did not have a church for black people where he was. But he said that God came and spoke to him. But he said that the language that God spoke was not the language that he heard other people speak. God spoke to him through plants. Sir. Yeah. Nature. Yeah. Think about what I'm saying, Brother Caleb. Mm -hmm. And to all those that are listening, imagine George Washington Carver he said he was never really into Christianity, but the spiritual aspect of the God that they spoke about was the God of the forest. It was the God of botany. It was the God of nature. And so God spoke to George Washington Carver unbeknownst to him. He wasn't doing it as a Christian. He was doing it as a spiritual being. And he saved America. Yes, now, I have a lot of respect for Albert Einstein. I really do for a lot of different reasons. I have respect for Albert Einstein, but he was not the scientist of the 20th century. George Washington Carver was. Wow. Good people, are you guys ready to turn your next idea into your business idea? If so, make sure to hit up the good folks at the Black Agenda Firm. Coach Ken and the team, they will take great care of you. Um, they'll do everything from establishing that LLC, that tough business plan, the business consultations, everything that you need to take that business off to the next level. If you're serious about becoming a full-time entrepreneur, scaling that business, making six figures plus, you already know who you got to contact, Coach Ken, the Black Agenda Firm. Make sure to show them some love, tap in with them, and follow them on social media at the Black Agenda, and also make sure to follow Coach Ken as well. We cannot wait for you to connect with him, have a great time, and also take that business to the next level and get that back. Tap in again with the Black Agenda Firm. I'm going to say it again, the Black Agenda Firm. Check them out. Tap in. Because another attribute of George Washington Carver was that he was a phenomenal artist. Hmm. People talk about using 100% of your brain. Hmm. My research tells me you can't, con see, that's, that's, what you call quantitative analysis, to use 100% of your brain. That's not the way to look at it. That's not the way to teach our children. The way to teach our children is not quantitative. It is qualitative. Sir. When you are using the maximum part of your brain, it's not so much that you're using parts of your brain, you're using your whole brain. And let me just say this about George Washington Carver. The right side of your brain is the side of your brain where the artist is, the musician, okay, the performer. The left side of your brain is where your mathematician is and your scientist and your reasoning skills. 
George Washington Carver was able to use both sides of his brain. He was whole brain because when he was an artist, he was using the right side of his brain. Mm -hmm. When he was a scientist, he was using the left side of his brain. Yeah. But he expressed what he knew in math and science through art. <laughs> and then he expressed the art in his science. Mm. He used a massive amount of his brain. But what was so beautiful was what I consider to be very unfortunate. It is because the health food industry that deals with soy, he could have been the captain of it mm. by growing the soybean. He was the one that brought America back. He saved the land because the European had the cash crop where they only, used, they only grew one, one, one uh, crop because yeah. they made money, cotton, tobacco. Yeah. But in doing that, you destroyed photovoltaics of the soil. Mm -hmm. Dr. George Washington Carver looked out and God spoke to him. When I say mm -hmm. God, I'm not talking about a religious God. I'm talking about the spirit within. Mm -hmm. Spirit came to him and said, no, man, you can't do this. You need to be able to put something else in the earth to replenish it, to bring it back to its, its strength through photovoltaics. And George Washington Carver said, well, God, what is it? And George Washington came to realize it was peanut. He came to realize that it was soy. Mm. And when he planted that, he literally raised the land as Jesus raised Lazarus. Wow. Brought it back to life, brother. <laughs> he saved this country. Mm. George Washington Carver, because he used both sides of his brain. So what's my point? Here's what we each can start to do right now to start using both sides of the brain. You, you right-handed, start to use your left. Hmm. And I'm not saying to write something that is very important in your left hand where you can't understand what you're saying. I'm saying just start using, like if you're going out to the store to buy some items, write down in the left hand the items, hmm. you know, cotton balls, you know, whatever, lettuce, Start using your left hand because there's something called stereogenesis. Stereogenesis means that if you're right-handed, you lean more towards your left hemisphere of your brain. Mm. If you're left-handed, you lean more towards your right side. So it's stereogenesis. It's, it's one of those things like this. But when you use 100% of your brain, this is what you do. You collapse it. Yes, yeah, connected. And the physical part of your brain that does that is called the corpus callosum. C-O-R-P-U-S-C-A-L-L-O-S-U-M. Corpus callosum. That is the bridge that goes right down the center of your head and it unites the left and right hemisphere of your brain. If you find that you carry, like when you go to the store and you, you, you carry things, like, or if you're going to work and you carry your attache case in the right hand, start to carry it in the left. There's a word, it's called ambidextrous. You can use either side. That's how we can start to practice using both sides of our brain. When, when I was a teacher, when I used to do this with my class, and I, let's say I was teaching, let's say, second grade, and I was teaching them addition of, of multiple digits. For homework, I would give them like 10 problems to solve. But then one of my assignments would be, I want you to draw the problem. Draw it, whatever it may be. And that way, what I made them do is take the mathematical concept and go to the art, art part. Wow. If I knew a student was into music, I would tell them, I want you to find me a song that <laughs> talks about what I just taught you in science. What I'm automatically doing is I'm making them take one side of the brain and take it to the other side. Right. If I was teaching arts and crafts, I would tell them, I want you to tell me something that you learned in math that reminds you of what you just learned. For instance, symmetry. Symmetry is a concept in art and in math. Symmetry says if the left side of the picture looks like the right side, it's symmetrical or it's equal. 
That's the same principle in mathematics when you're dealing with equations. Yeah. One plus one equals two. That is symmetrical. Mm. George Washington Carver did this all the days of his life, and that's why he was able to uh, achieve. But, but like I said, my heart goes out to the brother because he was an angel living in hell. Because mm. people would snatch his inventions. And he used to tell them, but for a self-addressed envelope, my inventions are yours. Because wow. he operated from heaven. That's what an angel does. Mm. But when you're living in hell, you got to be devilish. Because mm. everybody stole all of his ideas. He was the first person to be able to get dyes. He brought all these dyes into place. A lot of reason why we have all these different colors now is Crayola crayon is because of George Washington Carver. Wow. He was the first to bring back the color lapis lazuli since ancient Egypt. No one had seen that blue-green color for thousands of years before George Washington Carver, Dr. George Washington Carver, brought it back in his laboratory. Mm -hmm. This is who we are as a people. We don't have to go back to ancient Africa for classical African civilizations. We had a pharaoh that lived amongst us named Dr. George Washington Carver. <laughs> he was our Imhotep, mm -hmm. multi-genius. You don't need to go all the way back in history to find a classical African civilization because the civil rights and human rights of the 60s and 70s, that was a classical African civilization at its best. Dr. Martin Luther King, Minister Malcolm X, uh, Fannie Lou Hamer, R uh, Rosa Parks. I can go through the list of all our great leaders and powerhouses. They were classical Africans. But don't stop there. Hip-hop is a classical African civilization. Yes, indeed. It has all the ingredients of a classical <laughs> African civilization. It has language, which is rap. It has clothing. It, 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 it has the attitude, the swag of it, the writings of it, the history of it, the geography of it. But let's just stop for a moment, and let me just drop this on you, and then we can back up and we can talk and in uh, interact together. Of course. We are classical Africans mm. developing a civilization. Three millipod mm. is a classical African civilization that's attempting to do something for the people. You are royal, Brother Caleb. Thank you, Dr. Cobb. And I mean that, and, and I mean that not to puff it, but to help us understand that when you're willing to give to the community, when you're willing to give of yourself to the community, when you are in service to the community, you are royal. Thank you. It ain't about putting a crown on your head. <laughs> but you saw the crown they put on Jesus' head. Right. Thorns. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's another kind of crown. <laughs> that's not the kind of king and queen I'm looking for. Mm. You're royal through your actions. Mm. You're royal through your obedience to my aunt. Truth, justice, righteousness, harmony, balance, order, arrangement, reciprocity, that's royal. Yes, sir. And Africans, every one of them, every wave of Africans that came from the Twa Mbuti, they were classical Africans that created a classical civilization in America. The Clovis Folsom, the Australoids were classical Africans. Mm. And the ones that were stolen from Africa and brought here post-1492. We brought a classical African civilization that even to this day, the only thing that America offers the world in the arts is what black people have brought. Even country music is black. That's a fact. Yes, sir.